I'm Daniel and welcome to the Mona Project. We here at the Mona Project are continuing in our series of videos uh, with respect to advice, inspiration, guidance, uh, information, uh, advice, and I would like to talk this morning about the basic Jewish concept, love your neighbor as yourself. This comes as a surprise to Christians who attributed to a certain itinerant uh, preacher and miracle worker uh, 2,000 years ago, who somehow came up with the idea, love your neighbor as yourself, as some revolutionary novel concept. He was merely quoting Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, love your neighbor as yourself. This is a Jewish concept. It's not, it, it wasn't created by the J guy uh, 2,000 years ago. Now, this gives rise to the Golden Rule, um, which, is, uh, which was uh, set down by Hillel in uh, Perke Avos, The Ethics of the Father, where a Gentile came to him. He says, I want, I want to learn the Torah, but I, I'll only do it if you can sum it up uh, while standing on one foot. I don't want this thing to go on for days and days. Immediately, uh, Hillel stands on one foot. Whatever, that, whatever is hateful to you, don't do to somebody else. That's the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. Go learn the commentary. Uh, a nice way to do it. But this became the golden rules. Whatever is hateful to you, whatever you dislike, whatever is not good for you, don't do that to somebody else. So um, the question usually is, why is it phrased in the negative? Why is it said, whatever is wrong or hateful or bad for you, don't do some, to somebody else. Why isn't it said the way uh, Jesus said it, um, or Jesus was quoting, or rather misquoting Hillel, um, who lived a couple hundred years before Jesus? Why doesn't it say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you? Um, a story, this is, uh, a good explanation is given by uh, Rabbi Israel Salanter, who lived through most of the 1800s. And um, there's a story he relates see, that something that he that he experienced, something that he went through. A magid, a, a storyteller, a preacher, uh, an itinerant preacher, uh, came to town, and this is how he made his living. He would, you know, get a couple of uh, uh, dollars for for giving a, a drush of the Torah, the, a sermon, for lack of a better word. He comes to the town where uh, Rabbi Slur Salanter was, Harav Salanter. And this tiny little shtibel, this little shul, um, was basically supported by a very wealthy merchant who basically picked up the tab. And this merchant, because it was more or less his shul, uh, on uh, Shabbos afternoon uh, would give a sermon, for lack of a better word, a drush, a Dvar Torah. This itinerant preacher came along, he says, listen, could I give the drush, could I give the, uh, the Dvar Torah for Shal Shur this, this is, you know, and, and maybe you can, you know, give me something for it after Shabbos. And the, uh, the wealthy businessman said, no, I have a Talmud here, I give a, a, a lecture, and uh, that spot's taken. Uh, Harav Yisrael Salanter overhears this goes to the guy and he says, why does Hillel say, in, in his commentary uh, in uh, Perke Alvis, why does he say, what is it hateful to you, don't do so to somebody else? Why doesn't he say, uh, do unto, the other, uh, unto others as you would have them do unto you? Let's take the, the present situation. What's good for you is for you to give your Talmud uh, share, your, your, your lesson, your, your class. That's good for you. But it's not good for him. He makes his living, his the few dollars. The guys look at him. The guy's starving. Um, don't just go by what's good for you. What's bad for you? Don't do that for so, to, to, to somebody else. Don't deprive them of his livelihood. You wouldn't want you to be, to be deprived of your livelihood. Don't deprive him of his livelihood. And. Um, so that was uh, Rabbi Slayer Salanter uh, um, putting it into, uh, uh, into perspective and allowing the, um, the Magid 
to uh, on Shal Shabbos and Shabbos uh, make arrangements for him to uh, to give his drush and uh, and get his pay for it. Um, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Mono Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.